Uh, man, this is going to be a fun show because at Rackspace, we always asked uh, customers for their feedback using a variety of different ways. And and my guest today is uh, using AI to get customer feedback. So, so who are That's you? Right. Who am I? Uh, I am Jana Wallander. I am founder and CEO of Craftful. Craftful is a co-pilot that helps um, now thousands of product teams build better products by listening to users at scale, which is asking them for feedback and helping you incorporate that feedback into the product roadmap. So that's me. And you're not just doing net promoter score, right? That's that's one thing we did at Rackspace. We we wanted to know how likely you were to recommend our product to other people, right? And I, I guess that's a, a core piece of it, but you do a lot more than that. Give me an idea of what I could do with your service to get customer feedback from various places in my apps or services or communities. Yeah, so we, uh, we do both, um, you know, le- helping you collect data, new data, and then use the data you already have. So the first step is really to just connect all of your sources of feedback to Craftful. So that may be app reviews, support tickets, call transcripts, survey data from various sources, and lots and lots of different sources. And then what Craftful does, it goes out every day and collects your data from all of those sources. And then we crunch the data and we show you product insights, basically list prioritized lists of feature requests, complaints, uh, loved features, competitors mentioned, that sort of thing. Um, and then we let you chat with it and ask follow-up questions. Um, and then once you've really exhausted that and you're sort of like, okay, that's cool. I know everything everyone's ever told me about my product, but I still want to know more. Uh, we then have these AI-generated surveys and interviews um, that and the, the AI generated interviews actually new. We launched that this week, um, where you can say, I want to learn about this topic, or I want to learn more, kind of dive deeper on the feedback I've already gotten. And we automatically generate a survey for you. And then another option now is to then also uh, have the survey kind of interact with the user and ask follow up questions. and. Uh, really personalize the interview to the user and make sure that everything every you can you can learn as much as possible from this particular user and not waste their time with something that's not 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 interesting to them. They can really complain about the product and the way they want to do, uh, and and you will learn so much more because you you could you could do that with each individual user. Yeah, uh, tell me, uh, let's go back up to hundred thousand feet because you're building a tool that's using AI for people who are trying to get use AIs to do new things. What are you learning about the market, uh, and what are you learning about uh, businesses by doing this? And maybe what's the challenge? Well, let's just cover that. <laughs> One question at <laughs> a time, big- Scoble. <laughs> <laughs> great, great questions, all of them. I think that, you know, um, one thing we're seeing that's sort of like the maybe not so great news is that that companies are really consolidating and are trying to use AI for, for a lot of things. Um, and, and of course, we're helpful there, right? Because we help you um, do a lot of things and learn a lot of things and then still have time over to then act on all of those insights. Um, and so I think that that's kind of, um, we hear that this is, you know, we, we used to have big teams that used to do this kind of stuff, but now you guys, you guys are there so we could just sign up and get the same insights in a couple of minutes and, and then start acting on them. Right. So that's, I guess that's kind of like what I'm seeing in the industry more generally. I think the other thing is that there's this sense of, um, everyone needs to use AI. Um, and, and so everyone's kind of looking at, okay, well, the developers got their AI, right? Like that's that's great. They got the best, um, the latest, greatest stuff. But like, what what's there for me, right? Like that. Yeah. Well, Intercom has their own AI for support, right? And so they see us as this solution for product teams that is sort of um, an equivalent of that, um, but specifically to serve the needs of of product folks um, to be able to use AI. So we're sort of like this like human human AI interface for product teams. No, that's that's awesome. And how good is it at prioritizing? Because I, I or 
Yeah. You know, because how good is AI at doing this, at doing this kind of work, you know? I, I actually think that AI today would be like a mediocre PM <laughs> at, <laughs> at prioritizing, you know, but who knows? You oh, know, so it's about, it's about what, I, uh, what I could do, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't assessed you. <laughs> but um, the, um, I don't, I think that at least where we're at now, right? Like with AGI and things like that, like things are going to get very different. But for now, we're at a universe where, uh humans are still expected to figure out how to build a car when what they're hearing from users is, I want a faster horse. And so I think there's still that um, at a high level, that's kind of the, the, the difference there. Um, our AI will tell you, here's the things that are coming up most often. Um, and soon it will be telling you, here's the things that are coming up most often with this particular sentiment. Um, mm. so that you could, you could kind of act on, on that data and you can kind of slice and dice it and see, here's the kind of thing that's coming from these kind of customers. Um, but, but generally kind of this more high level prioritization exercise is still left to the product manager, um, to do, um, cause there's still, there's still some work humans, humans got to do. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that is that employee feedback being fed back into the system to to help train future versions of Craftful? Um, yes, in some sense, yes. Um, yeah. There's definitely we we don't have um, you know we don't attempt to do that kind of prioritization yet, and as a result, we're not exactly collecting data on that kind of prioritization. But we do um, the prioritization we do do, which is based on number of mentions and the analysis that is made and, and sort of like the way in which the we surface the mentions, all of those things are editable. And when they're editable, that is sort of the, the, the intent is for the model to get better and better over time based on how the user interacts with the data so that um, it can even like, it's not even so much as the model gets better. It just gets better at interacting with this particular human and behaving like this particular human wants it to behave. I'm getting uh, feedback from a variety of places, from LinkedIn messages to uh, Twitter DMs to emails. Can it, all of that be fed into the system as well, or does it have to come into a structured place? So far, it has to come into a structured place, and I'm with you. Uh, most of my, because kind of our our user base found us mostly originally through Twitter. Um, most the, some of the best feedback I'm getting is coming via Twitter DMs. And we have a we've sort of I've, I've hacked together our product to to basically be able to take that in when I just like every time I see that I copy and paste it and put it into this uh, our freeform text analysis so that it all ends up in the repository. But there isn't a way yet to connect Twitter DMs, LinkedIn DMs, and some of these better sources for me. Um, it is, it is really mostly connected to kind of, yeah, support ticket sources and, and app reviews and survey data and some of these other ones. Calls, um, you can, you can transcribe calls and they, they automatically land in Craftful and get analyzed. You mentioned that you're uh, going to turn on some sentiment features. So could you listen to a call and understand that the uh, customer is angry or, uh, joking around, happy, right? The difference between the two often is it tells uh, the support team, you know, this is uh, a more important thing to solve. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. And so we're going to do both the binary sentiment from positive to negative, as well as the actual emotions um, that, uh, that the feedback exhibits so that you can get a sense for this type of feature uh, is usually associated with this specific emotion, <laughs> this anger, or this frustration, or this excitement. Um, and, and it also helps if, you know, folks are requesting features uh, to get a sense for like, what, with what urgency, right? Like, what, what is, what is the motivation there? Is it sort of just like, ah, oh, man, you know, um, I, I, I guess I wouldn't mind dark mode, you know, or is it, um, is it like, I need to be able to log out of this thing so that it's not recording me every single second, right? Like some, something that feels a little bit more urgent. 
This stuff is real important. I, you know, I was thinking about uh, New Bank down in Brazil. They built their own customer relationship management system. So if a customer calls in, they get routed right to an employee without going through a phone tree. And that's one of the ways they they differentiated themselves from other banks in, in Latin America. And they're now a public company doing that. What what makes give me some best practices? What what would make a great uh, company in your eyes? for getting really great customer feedback and being able to act fast on that customer feedback? Because I, I think people are like product managers or executives are looking for that kind of, you know, let's get this product, uh, this company much more in tune with the customer, right? Yeah, I, I think it is, um, it is the interest in learning what users are saying, right? Because a lot of companies, particularly big brands, there's there is a bunch of, feedback out there. Um, and I think I, as a product manager, you know, the reason, the reason I'm building this uh, is before, before starting Craftful, I was a product manager and this is my pain point. Like I always wanted to know what are people, like every company I would join, I'd be like, where are all the places <laughs> where users are giving us feedback? How can I get into all of these different places? And like support teams would be like, well, you know, PMs don't really do this here. Um, it, you need to have certain, uh, um, you know, uh, credentials and stuff. Um, but, um, but I think it is the number one thing is to have that curiosity to, to know that there, this is our users have spent time giving us some feedback and we should care um, to make sure that we've listened to all of it and addressed everything we can um, and think is important. Um, and then, and then also like then try to learn more. Right. So I think that curiosity is really, it's more of a culture element but i think that's critical for then being able to set up right like if you if you have a curiosity it's really simple you go into craftful and you connect some sources and it takes a couple of minutes and <laughs> you're you're up and running right yeah but i think i think i think it is the mod motivation to to learn is really really important yeah um do you track if an employee has gotten back to to that customer and answered the the question or complaint or or problem or whatever they're giving feedback about not yet okay. definitely on the roadmap to be able to close the loop with with the user and kind of let them know because now with ai the really cool thing is that you can really let them know hey, we're going to build this feature or, hey, we're not going to build this feature, but we're going to build this other feature that actually addresses your problem in a much better way. And here's why. And you can do this in a really personalized way that takes into account what they said and what like what you're doing and what maybe what the team talked about. And um, and you can do that with millions of people. Right. So that's the really cool, cool uh, time we live in. Right. Does does it warn exec or do you build a dashboard for executives to know you know oh your net promoter score is going up today or you know or it's going down today or something like that so that uh, you know an executive particularly at a bigger company with a uh, with a bunch of people doing this kind of work could they have a dashboard where they can see the health of the product and see you know yeah. whether people are just reacting negatively to do it today or or particularly to a new release that gets put put out that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So the particularly that that um, sentiment analysis that, that that I mentioned that is uh, going to be a dashboard that will let you track um, this specific sentiment of users over time and also see what's what's happening today. Because so far, for most part, we really focused on the builders helping the builders learn what users are saying and then using that data to write good product documentation, be able to push that to the project management tools, write the good PRD, um, kind of act on the data. But um, but we're hearing a lot from execs. Like, I just want to see that my people are doing <laughs> doing the work. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so, that's, <laughs> so part of this, uh, the... The, the sentiment is going to be to have an insights panel where you can kind of just like keep a pulse on what users are doing. I also say that we have, you can do NPS surveys via Craftful. You can do any kind of survey. You can use it as a standard survey builder if you wanted to. Um, but I'm not a big believer in NPS. And so I think that um, while we will continue to support it, like if people want to collect that data, um, it's not probably ever going to be kind of front and center. And when we say you're tracking the sentiment of your, your users, um, you can learn so much more based on 
actually listening to the like what they're saying yeah. uh, and the their their sentiments um, and what they're requesting at what frequency. There's so many so many different signals now um, that that I think um, is going to be much more interesting to teams. <laughs> Could you use this to run a restaurant chain? Because a, a lot of that customer feedback comes in on Yelp or Google reviews or some other place like that. Can I hook it up to the to a Yelp and get and watch my restaurants review? I, but the better yes. question is, what kind of business is this great for, and what kind of business does it suck for? <laughs> right. Um, this is great for every business, and I think that's sort of the thing that was really eye opening to me when we first launched it, um, and we had. You know, thousands of users sign up. We sort of broke every API that we were using. We broke through the rate limits and we had to kind of go out and try to get extensions. And what we saw was that we we had um, we had product teams from every tech company sign up. Not not surprising. Uh, but then it was um, um, restaurants, restaurant brands, global retail brands, financial institutions, um, car manufacturers, public agencies, cities. Uh, because everyone has something that's a that's a product. A restaurant produces their food, right? Um, or they also have websites and sometimes apps, which is kind of what I think the, they're more likely to be looking for with Craftful, just because back then we particularly supported app reviews. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's it's really everywhere. Every, like pretty much everyone's a builder, yeah. <laughs> right? Of sorts. Even if they don't have specific titles like product managers uh, or other kind of what you would traditionally see in tech companies. But um, I think we did a good job of positioning it as something that they would want to use. And then we saw them come, which is which is really exciting. How, how much does this co cost? Uh, how much does this cost to build into an app or into a restaurant chain or something like that? Um, so we have we have a number of plans, including a free plan, which uh, kind of individ individuals often use until they upgrade to a higher plan. But uh, right now we have a pro plan um, at uh, fifteen dollars, um, which analyzes up to a certain volume of data. And then once you're through that analysis, then you go to Teams plan, which is uh, three hundred dollars. So it's and then we have an enterprise plan, which is sort of a little bit more. Yep. Do you, do you build components to put on web pages or into apps where, you know, you can actually become a ticketing system? Are, are you trying to compete with the ticketing systems like that were out there or? Yeah, so we're not trying to compete with ticketing systems, but you can embed our service. Um, so you can embed our service in a web, uh, web app. Um, and then obviously over time, you'll be able to embed them in more places. Do you think you're going to ever incorporate an AI chat bot to talk to the customer directly and say, Hey, I noticed you're having problems here. Here's some things you could try while you're on the phone with the customer service agent or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I would never say never. Um, but I think that that's, that's such a broad use case. Like there's so many problems to solve with just serving the product teams and making this a really, really helpful experience for them that I think that um, serving the end users would probably be outside that scope. But, you know, I, who knows? <laughs> At some point, maybe we're just, just like giant company that, that does everything, <laughs> AI that's related to products and people, right? I don't know. <laughs> you probably have a small team, right? Tell us a little about the company <laughs> itself. <laughs> exactly. how, how did you get this started and um, how did, how, what, how did you get it funded? That kind of thing. You know, talk to other entrepreneurs. Yeah. But... So, so, we, so um, Craftful started as a different solution for product teams um, and really was kind of predated, uh, predated both ChatGPT and the GPT-3 API. Um, and so originally it was more of a standardized user experience that learned based on how users were interacting with with the product, um, we then evolved into more of a um, uh, um, basically an analytics platform, and and I and I was really fortunate to be kind of one of the very first people to experiment with the GPT three API in like the very early days, um, and and this is the first problem that I. Like I gave it a bunch of app reviews and saw the promise, <laughs> and kind of continued iterating on that. We 
uh, then launched, this is kind of in early 2020, we launched the first um, GPT powered feature in 2021. Um, and we, then decided to completely pivot to this um, last year. So it's really been this, this version of Craftful has been a 13 month wild journey, <laughs> um, but we've really gone the, the, yeah, we've been through a few pivots along, along the way. Uh, started the company out of uh, Y Combinator. Um, so I kind of uh, had, had this idea that. You know, I was, I was head of product at IFT. I had this idea that we could build, that I could help product managers build better products. Um, applied to YC on a whim, um, got in, and so I had to quit my job and, and incorporate and, and quickly get started. <laughs> I think back then we probably were like the, the the youngest company in the batch. Now it's it's a little bit more common to be kind of idea stage, but but it wasn't just at that that time. That's awesome. Quite unusual. Y Combinator sure has helped a lot of entrepreneurs get going that way, right? Um, since you've been playing with AI for a while, what, what frustrates you about AI? What, you know, in the technology stack that you're building, what, you know, what do you wish that the AI, you know, the different models that you're using would do? Or, you know, where do you think the industry needs to go to help people, yeah. help entrepreneurs for, like you? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think I'm, a, I have two, um, two ways I think about it. <laughs> one is, one is we're always kind of, we've built the best possible thing you can build with like the best models today with GPT-4 and we're already thinking about what we're going to build with GPT-5, right? So that's part, part of me is kind of constantly thinking about what's the next thing. And, and most of that is around, okay, there's certain types of features that we would want to build with a model that can reason better. Um, and so I will think about that sometimes. But I think that I'm actually much more in the super appreciative camp because I had to build for GPT-3 and kind of work through the really complex prompts that you had to do back then just to get something somewhat meaningful out of it. And then um, and then in the beginning, of like when the GPT-3 model kept improving, uh, that improvement would like break our product. <laughs> and so every time there was a new mod, like a new version, you'd be like, ah. Oh. And I remember like when Da Vinci uh, 3 launched and, and, and that was the first time that the model didn't break the product because it was like, it just got smarter. Um, and it could take the prompt as is and we didn't have to we didn't have to change anything and so now it's and then it became more of like well how do we pare it down so that it becomes less complicated right so so i think that um now i'm sort of looking at it and i'm like they can do so much it's pretty incredible right like yeah. <laughs> i suppose i think someone who's starting out right now and would just look at it and be like oh i had the all of these expectations right um i think my expectations are much lower yeah <laughs> as a result of having tinkered early <laughs> For people just starting out with AI, do you have any tips for people that, you know, you've been doing it for a while, the prompting tips or uh, the tips on how to, are you, are you playing with agents? Are you playing with a rag? You know, which are some of the terms like I see you know, some yes. of the technologies I see entrepreneurs doing. Yeah, we, I mean, we have rag uh, in our, so there's, you get, you get the feedback and then you can ask follow-up questions. And so we had to build in quite a lot of um, kind of complex things with embeddings in, into our product. Um, and we are, we are using the agent API. Um, so um, I think we're using, we're using all of the <laughs> available technologies that, that you can to put together this whole like pipeline. Um, I would say, you know, I probably play around with it. I, I don't think that, I don't think that any of those things are absolutely necessary um, to build a great product. Like we started just building with, um, this is before, you know, before GPT um, three, before G, sorry, before GPT four, before GPT three point five. Yeah. Um, you can get really far with just like just taking a model and, and and figuring out how to solve a very specific problem. I think it is about identifying a cool problem that you can solve with, with this technology. Um, I, I sort of wouldn't, wouldn't complicate it, <laughs> I guess. 
Speak English to it, right? <laughs> speak English to it, or not English, you know, speak speak any language. Actually, that's another thing that I would say, like, what I found was fascinating. We launched and we had users all over the world. And I'd say, like, um, suddenly had to figure out how to go global in, like, as a tiny startup, which you have to, right, because LLMs can do can do this work, uh, right? Like we, yeah. when you're doing it, you could talk Japanese, you, you could talk German, whatever, right? Exactly. And which is great because people have users all over the world and they may be an English speaking team, but they have their product in different countries. And so it's really helpful for them to be able to interview their users in their native language and then get the insights in English or whatever language their team speaks in. Um, but um, but that was sort of a really interesting thing uh, where suddenly people were sort of like giving us feedback in like languages we've never spoken and, and you know, on the analysis in languages we've never spoken. <laughs> it was pretty wild. It's a new world uh, that AI opens up to all of us. Any Anything else? Because uh, I'm not a product manager, right? I, I, it's hard for me to... If, uh, uh, figure out what a pro product manager would need to know about you. Is there a question I didn't ask that I should should ask you? Um, it's a great question. It's a great question. Um, trying to go back and, and think about what, what you've asked. Well, most of the <laughs> um, high level stuff. You know. get asked sort of like, what are um, you know, what are uh, product managers doing today and what are they going to do in the future and how, how, like, how should they adjust for this world where AI is going to be like a major contributor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could, how, if I, if I was building a humanoid robot, how would I use your product? <laughs> would, would I talk to my humanoid robot and say, Hey, humanoid robot, you washed the dishes badly today. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's the thing, right? I think that eventually, even if, if the AI is sitting on the other end and listening to the feedback, there still will need something that collects the feedback from the humans, right? And, and, um, and figures out all the different ways to do that. Um, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of complexity there, right? Like around, if you're just specifically asking questions in a survey and getting very targeted, um, answers back versus having a call, uh, and, and people are sort of, there's two people talking and you don't know who's kind of the person, the person asking questions who's, who's the person providing feedback. Um, and we humans will have all of those problems still, even when, robots are are providing services right so i think that like a lot of those same pain points will need to be solved i do think that um and i i know that this is sort of like some somewhat controversial view on the world but i do think that when um you know even in a world where ai and robots can provide a lot of the services and kind of do a lot of our work I do think that there is this human element of building that is so innate to particularly folks who love 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 to build. Yeah. Um, that yeah. uh, folks will continue wanting to like create things for other humans, um, and so I think that we will see builders build, even if they maybe don't have to, right, um, or don't have to to make a living, but they will still want to do it because. Because it's fun. Even and if it's I had rewarding. a humanoid robot that could uh, clean, you know, the toilets and wash the dishes, maybe a builder teaches it to dance. Now, now I have to rate it uh, on its dancing technique. You know, oh, nice dancing. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, or could you do exactly. this kind of? Could you teach me how to line dance like a country line dance? Right, that's feedback that a, a builder might need to gra grab and and do something with. And that's right. Right. I love it. You're like a cleaning robot is going to have apps that that humans are going to be like, yeah, this is all you you AI have thought about all the useful stuff, but let's let's provide some entertainment here, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new world of product management. Um, thank you so much. This is really fun getting to know you and your company. I, I've seen people use it, and they're they're getting a lot of value out of it. So thank you. Where do we learn more about you uh, about Craftful and about you? 
Yeah, um, probably for Craffle, just craffle.com um, has has all, all, all the relevant information. I think I'm probably the most active on Twitter, uh, which is still Yana Tweets. I guess I should rename myself to Yana X, but <laughs> I'm sure that's taken. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to stop calling it Twitter. I've, uh, you know, I've been on uh, Twitter or X for what seventeen years. It's hard to get stop calling them tweets and stop calling them Twitter. You know, I still call them tweets. I still call them retweets. Uh, yeah. um, I'm not sure I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending some time with me. That was awesome. Thank you. Really enjoyed it.